Now we're getting into projects that are still being spec'd out and we don't even know the exact route, so keep that in mind. Let's do this by region, by starting with the South Shore. Does the South Shore uh, have a slogan? No. South Shore. A uh, sure thing. <laughs> South Shore. Just a traffic jam away. South Shore. How else are you going to get to America? <laughs> Which one's your favourite? <laughs> They're all awful. South Shore. They're all awful. <laughs> Doesn't your family live there? Yeah. <laughs> Désolé, papa. Venez au bon marché. Oui, papa. The first project, South Side, which is mostly East Side, is the South Shore Tramway. This is slated to go from La Prairie to Longueuil, which would put it at around 17 kilometers. No costing on this project has been done yet, but this route makes total sense. Recent research shows that people just aren't living in the city center like they used to. At this point, we've actually won the battle to convert the people who work downtown to using transit. The people who are left in cars are people going between suburbs, not into town and we kind of need to wire them into the network, so to speak. The completion date for this, if it all goes well, would be sometime between 2025 and 2030. The issue is the choice of transit. So trams, streetcars, trolleys are all different words for the exact same thing. They used to look like this, and they were a totally rational thing to build. Rails predated decent tires by a century or so. Horse-drawn trams showed up in the early 1800s, uh, then the same thing happened with uh, electric motors, which uh, predated internal combustion engines as well. So in 1910, when your great-great-great-grandpa is going to work, he's taking a tram, the cheapest and most reliable way to get him to the brothel. Boom, grandpa's a slut. Then along came the economic reality. Often there is a story of a conspiracy theory to remove trams, which did happen a few times, but it's a convenient, simple boogeyman for larger forces at work. A new thing came along. It doesn't need rails maintained. It can go anywhere. It doesn't get stuck behind a parked car. A car doesn't get stuck behind it. It can hold the same number of people. It costs nothing to build. It's cheap to run. Cyclists don't wipe out on the rails. It it's a bus! In all rapidly expanding cities, laying new tram tracks instead of just using this new technology didn't make financial sense anymore. No conspiracy required. So they started pulling them up. They stayed in some new world cities where they were iconic, or where they were integrated into the subway system, or in cities that weren't really sprawling at all. But in growing western cities across the world, generally the trams went away. Then, starting in the 1970s, this started showing up. This ain't your slutty grandfather's tram. Looks like a train, right? That's because it is a train. It's split rail. Wee 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 wee. This is going to show up on the South Shore. There are two key strengths to light rail. One, it can use rail lines, so that train can just run on regular rail lines, fly past and avoid any congestion, and then hop into the streets where it needs to. Two, just like the metro, it takes a lot of people per driver. So if your labor costs are high, light rail works pretty well. But what keeps happening is cities keep building tramways. When you hear tram these days, they are usually signaling something with their choice of words. First of all, it's not grade separated, which is when a junction is like this, letting traffic and a train fly through at full speed without stopping for each other. And tram is also a sign that it's mostly running on tracks on the street. So it's got all those disadvantages of grandpa's tram, and in the end it's only got advantage number two, being able to take more people per driver. So why do we keep building these? Well it's these fucking things. Politicians don't want to have to cut a ribbon on a bus rapid transit system. People don't care, it's a road, it doesn't feel like a thing, you know? I remember when I first heard of them I was like, Pfft. So bus lines? And then on the other end, it's really hard to build a subway. If you propose a subway, you probably won't be in office when it opens to cut the ribbons. I mean, just look at the rim and Denny Corder. Politicians like tramways because it hits a sweet spot. It's flashy. In fact, it being on the road isn't even a bad thing. Look on my public works, you mighty, and vote. But they really only make sense if they are true light rail, like the rim almost always off the street, grade separated, not down on the road where a bus belongs. Otherwise it's just a long, space consuming, expensive and inflexible bus to have that single advantage of less drivers per passenger. No one likes buses. I don't like buses. But when you look at the numbers, you're going to start to like buses. And the experience of BRT stops on a road designed for and prioritizing a bus is quite different from rattling along in the 55 down St. Laurent, stopping every minute to let a person on and off. Did you see the uh, post that did the rounds last year about um, women having unintended uh, public orgasms on, on Montreal's buses? 
didn't. Ladies, the BRT network will get you to work, not get you off. I hope that the South Shore project is actually light rail and only touches the road once or twice. I guess we'll probably see in the next year or so. A South Shore rail line expansion that I can get behind, at least as far as the technology goes, is the expansion of the REM from Brassard to Chambly. I assume to compensate for the ludicrously low density, the case the depot would get into the real estate game along the route. They could basically long game the payoff of the project, which is exactly how an institutional investor like them thinks. And there is one final South Shore Transit project, the Yellow Line Extension. We know from a 2011 study that it's uh, going to head down the river and then inland towards my in-laws. That'll be great, we can go regularly. Apparently a project office has been set up to explore both of these options. Hopefully something is uh, actionable on this soon. Now it's interesting that both the Yellow Line and REM Extension are being pushed by the CAQ. Maybe we can explain with some visual aids. So are these the best places to build transit? No. <laughs> Chambly is a goddamn farm. Giving cows and chickens an automated light rail line while Montreal North rides the bus is absurdly unfair favoritism. Montreal is perpetually in an on-again, off-again relationship with the provincial administration, which is a pretty typical first past the post dynamic. Oh, oh, do you hear that? Sign of things to come. You have to feel sorry for the mayor having to work in these conditions. She is basically running a city where the voters didn't vote the right way. It's really not easy. Hopping over to the island, there are a number of prospective transit plans. First and foremost is the Lachine Tramway. Yay, tramway. It'd be around 14 kilometers long, uh, intersect with the Orange Line and connect this underserved community. It could be longer and connect to the airport, or go through downtown. We aren't really sure at this point. So this tramway is part of a deal that Valerie Plant made with the CIQ to release these federal funds for a tramway to Quebec City in exchange for a future tramway in Montreal. This project is pretty clearly being spun as the first part of the pink line. The pink line, you say? That's right, the pink motherfucking line. Oh shit, it's the sign that was gonna haunt Project Montreal. It was boldly proposed during the Montreal Municipal Election Campaign to be a line between Montreal North and Le Chien, coming in at 21 kilometers, and as you can see from the sign, imagined as a subway. Based on the price of the Blue Line extension, it would have been $17 billion and have a completion date in the 2030s. You'll notice it was because it's not happening. <laughs> Underground subways are so expensive that you just can't build them without other levels of government. It's like a combination lock of federal, provincial and municipal. And unfortunately for our mayor, the provincial part of the lock is not lined up right now. I think the best way to explain uh, the money swap is to do it to, with visual tools. Give us money for the pink line. Fuck no, your city never votes for me. But we need your help to get this built. Well, why don't you get those federal funds you have reserved for a tramway project to Quebec City, where people actually vote for me, and then we'll figure something out for you. Okay, promise? Absolutement. Time to put these back over the bed. So Miraval is trying to wheel and deal with the CAQ. However, at the same time, the Regional Transport Agency removed the pink line from their official planning documents. So the current strategy is to be realistic and spin a set of projects that kind of cover the same terrain as the pink line as the pink line. So you can say here and here and here are the pink line. Did I say pink line? What I meant to say was pink solution. So if your definition of the pink line is a subway line that goes from Le Chien to Montreal North, then this is probably gonna be disappointing for you. If your definition of the pink line is cost-effective upgraded transit reaching pretty close to Montreal North, then you're gonna be happy. Can I make a suggestion to the city administration? What about no tram? What about you put a BRT in Le Chien and you use the save money to put a BRT up to Montreal North. You could even put some of it on Quebec City Street and fix the road at the same time. There are hydro and telephone poles smack in the middle of the bike path. I don't know if people are gonna buy the pink line spin if it doesn't hit Montreal North. Personally, I like the campaign strategy. I think they fully intended to follow through and then got hit with the reality of provincial politics. It's called policy lurch. 
You can't blame the CAQ for not wanting to fund the pink line. It passes through many electoral districts that haven't voted for a non-liberal candidate in 50 years. It's just the feast and famine reality that our electoral system enhances. Not all trams are bad. An example of a good one is the proposal to build one to the northeast. There is a very long strip of land that was originally expropriated for an expressway in the 1970s. They actually demolished uh, 2,000 buildings and then, uh, hey, Sorry about that. Anyway, I think we can use this land for something a lot better than a highway. This land would allow for a track that doesn't go on the road, and many of the uh, little roads that it crosses are not actually very busy. It could even be grade separated when needed at busy intersections. And there is room to make nice landscaped earth banks so that the houses don't even hear the noise. Down at the end, the tram could then transition onto the street for the last little section. On the surface, this could be a pretty good example of trams being used correctly with a, a 95% light rail and just a little bit of tram when needed. The issue is this is yet another transit project that the CAQ is pursuing in Montreal. Gee, I wonder why. Oh, there you go. They only got two ridings on the island and it's the only transit project that they are pushing for. So I imagine that the city is pretty indifferent on this one, but is probably annoyed that projects getting pursued are so single-mindedly focused on the CIQ voter base, and not the big picture needs of the 4 million people that live in the area. Meanwhile, on the western side of the island is the Orange Line extension. So the city is interested in seeing the Orange Line extended from Cote Vertu to the Bois-Franc Ram Station. This extra 2.3 kilometers would probably come in at a cost of $2 billion or so if it was underground. So while we're in the neighborhood, I guess we should check out the island of Laval. Or is it? Think this is the island of Laval? Wrong! These are the islands of Laval. This is the island of Jesu. Oh Laval. So in the same batch of CAQ funding to explore this transit line to Montreal East, and this transit line to Chambly, the CAQ are also interested in reaching yet another voter base over here. The basic proposal is a connection going from Pinot down to the Orange Line uh, to the new REM station uh, in the west. This is a big in the billions guy, but uh, totally a good choice. Currently you hear concerns from the city that building out these new transit lines will strain the central transit lines. But if a CAQ voter who takes the new REM line to the orange line, say, gets pissed off at crowded trains, they're gonna kinda help to push the city's cause, right? Also, it's connected to quite a lot of things that aren't the orange line. I think that Laval is handing the Montreal administration an opportunity here. Remember the orange line extension that is being proposed? Well, it's stopping short at Bois-Franc. That's because now the roles are reversed. Laval didn't vote for Project Montreal, so who cares about those guys, right? This is that problem of not having a more holistic approach from both sides here. But I would make the point that if you bought the line across the river, you would get yourself pretty close to some CAQ voters. There's something in it for me, there's something in it for me, let's fill the subway together. Francois, I can't do this anymore, I'm married. Anyway, that's enough of that. When we take a step back and look at all these transit lines, you can see that there's some patterns emerging. Sure, the mayors are advocating for their voters, the CAQ is advocating for their voters, but the mayors are right. Mass transit is supposed to be for the masses. You can have a bit of a build it and they will come attitude uh, in a growing city like Montreal. There is an argument for saying, well, if you're going to sprawl, do it with a transit first approach. That way the sprawl can be walkable, dense, and green. Because if the city expands as walkable, dense, and green, that isn't sprawl anymore, that, that's just growth. We shouldn't be seeing this as an X or Y thing. This is an X and Y thing. Montreal isn't an island. <laughs> well, actually it is. Although Montreal is an island physically, it's not an island economically. We now have a transit boom that has prioritized people based on their political allegiances rather than their needs. I'm worried that the way our provincial government works creates a policy lurch that doesn't give these long-term projects enough time to see completion. How does the saying go? A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Sure, the South Shore and Laval could be feasting while Montreal has a famine, but I'd be gutted to see their transit projects getting squashed just as I was sad to see the pink line get crushed. I'm priming the pumps here for an upcoming video. The way our political system works creates serious stability problems that undermine infrastructure and transit projects. It's hard to draw a line across a city without crossing these ideological political boundaries. Quebec isn't alone. Next door in Ontario, 
They were so close to building a high-speed rail corridor with the uh, Liberal government, but Doug Ford, who had a totally different set of transit priorities, came along and threw it out. In five years, out with Doug's plan. Looks like high speeds. Back on the menu, boys! <laughs> Infrastructure needs two things. First of all, big picture thinking, where you've got as many people as you can at the table, not 37% of people scattered across these different ridings. Secondly, it needs a more stable system that plots a more central course over the long term. Unfortunately, it looks like we don't have that. Play to your base, see the province as 125 little squares to factor in or not. But you know what? Fuck that. Let's fix this. But the mayors are right. Mass transit is supposed to be for the mayors. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Just just Valerie Plant, like <laughs> just, she goes on to the long guy. And like is like gets me out of mayor and then the mayors jump on the transit. And they're just and people are like, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on.